the first tool that we're excited to show is uh, the center rectangle. So under the rectangle stack, you have the option to select center rectangle. Sometimes it's the little things really that make a big difference. Um, but with this, the center rectangle, if I click on a point and drag it out, you'll see that what we do here is we automatically add the relations and constraints for a center rectangle. Um, so this is just a huge time saver. So once I do this, you see that I can drag it up and down. Everything remains parallel and constrained to the midpoint. Um, in there. So that saves a bunch of time. And the alternative, the way we used to have to do things, is just mi more steps, is if I draw out the rectangle there and I come over to center line, I would come over and I would roll down until I get to a midpoint and I would go from midpoint to midpoint. And then I would come over here midpoint to midpoint like that. And that's how we would do things in the past. And then you could add the parallel and things like that. So that is the workflow, how it used to be. And this is just a huge time saver and allows you to automatically drag out those. And then from there, you could just throw some dimensions on it and you're off and running. Um, so that's a huge time saver with um, sketching there. Another huge time saver is the ability to fit to a polyline for a rectangle. Um, so to explain what I mean by that, I'll come over here and I'll select this plane. And I'm going to go ahead and create a silhouette of the entire part. And then go into my sketch and turn off those other sketches that I had left on from before. Um, so if I wanted to fit a rectangle to the outside of this part, uh, and you'll see what I mean uh, before, what I had to do in the past is I would essentially just draw out a rectangle and then come back and then snap it like so, right? Um, so I'm just gonna delete that. We don't need to do that anymore. So if I come back over to rectangle, we have this fit to polyline. So it's intelligent. It knows that it's trying to create a rectangle and based on what I select, it's gonna fit a rectangle to it. So if I window in and select, you'll see here as I go along, you'll see that it's fitting the sides of a rectangle to what's there. And I could have selected an easy demo part to fit just a rectangle. But the reason why I selected this is that look at how intelligent it is. It's able to base it off of what I select here and then fit it automatically. And then once I'm done, I just accept that. And then, so we've had the ability to fit to polyline for other tools for a long time. See, so for a line here and then a line there, if I just come in and fit those and then come trim them together with a corner trim like that. You'll see that we created the polyline around the outside. So we had those tools for other things like circles. We just didn't have it for rectangles. See circle. And the one that people are usually pretty impressed with is slot. So if that's a slot, you can come in and have it fit a slot automatically. Um, so the main point of showing this one was that we have fit to polyline for a rectangle, which is a huge time saver. Next up is we improve this snapping to other sketches functionality. So if I just offset a plane out here in space and then I go ahead and I put a sketch on that. I can come in and before we did we had issues with snapping to sketches on other on other planes, right? So I can actually snap and have it create a relation to the points um, on the other sketch. And if I rotate, look, it's way off in the distance, but it's snapped. Those are coincident. Now Again, this is more of a time savings thing because in the past, what you would do is you would come over here and you would say, I want to convert entities, right? And then once you accept that, you could come over here and convert this to a construction. And then you could come over and you could draw these same lines and snap it that way. And it would do the same thing, but this is just a huge time saver. And it's something that uh, many CAD packages have, right? So um, snapping 
to another sketch. Another thing that is uh, really important here is the midpoint constraint for arcs. Um, and just adding it and making it very simple. So if I come over here and I draw an arc, and then I accept that, I can come over and I can select that arc and the point there, and you can come over to constraints, and there is a midpoint option now. So it will, it will snap that to the midpoint. And if I come over here and drag it, it always stays midpoint. Now, if I don't want those things to move, I can constrain them by dimensioning them, or I could just come over and say, add fixed. So now you'll see if I drag it out, it stays midpoint, right? Um, so that midpoint constraint is another time saver. It makes it a lot easier. Again, there's always workarounds and things that you can do to still do it manually, but these are all huge enhancements for time savings. DX already saves you so much time reverse engineering from scan data. These just make it even that much more uh, powerful. Another uh, sketching one is more of like a sketch setup. So if I have my, my mesh here and I built this sketch, I said create mesh sketch off of this mesh and I only have one mesh here right now but if I do a select all copy paste so I create another one there um, if I come over to this sketch and we'll just identify which one it is by clicking on it and seeing it in the tree you can edit the sketch which is adding editing the profile or you can say I want to edit the mesh sketch setup right so if you come into the mesh sketch setup, this happens every once in a while when you're doing a large project. Maybe you need to swap out the mesh that you used for that mesh sketch. In the past, that was not a possibility. So now you have the ability to come over here and clear out that mesh. And then you can say, I want to uh, select another mesh. Now I created at the end, I should have rolled back first. Um, but you get the idea. I have the ability to swap out my mesh. In the past, you would have to actually recreate another mesh sketch. And then if you wanted to reuse anything from that old one, you would have to convert entities and stuff over. So what this allows you to do is I can open up my mesh sketch setup, get rid of the mesh, select a new one, and then hit OK, and then it will rebuild, right? Um, so that is a, it's just a minor thing that uh, many people probably didn't even know was a limitation. But now that it is here, it's going to save some time as far as editing your mesh sketches and setting them up properly. Another per, uh, very interesting piece of functionality is um, converting uh entities inside of a sketch from cylinders was weird in the past there were some issues with so if i want to do a convert entities on this right here with cylinders we we uh so now if i convert that edge these will be coincident with the outermost tangent point right um you could, in the past, the way to get around this was to go ahead and get rid of that. And instead of doing a convert entities, the way we do it, convert entities is broken up into kind of two different categories, converting specific entities and then creating a silhouette of something. So I could do this. This is another thing that people forget exists, so I like to show it right now. But that'll silhouette that entire surface and create that entity. Um, so that's one way to go about it. Or now you have the ability to say, I want to convert entities and select this edge. And it will project that and make a 2D line that is perfectly coincident with the extents of that circle. So that is a new piece of functionality in the convert entities tools. So the next piece of functionality is just the uh, tangent magnitude of a spline. So if I come in to regular sketch here and I will grab my spline tool and draw my splines on the screen. And once I create that, I can click on it. I could double click and I can actually gr 
drag the magnitude and change that, which you could always do that, but this will allow you to now key in a value for the magnitude of that. So now I can just come in and hit 10, 100, whatever it is, and accept those and create uh, more robust splines. So the magnitude of a 3D spline or a 2D spline, um, it works the same either way. Another really neat piece of functionality is um, the ability to represent the smart dimension of a circle in a variety of ways. So you can select, do you want to do the radius or a smart dimension or the diameter. So you can call out, depending on what you select, will, that's what the smart circle is, uh, the smart tool is, it will based, be based on what you select. Um, so this essentially creates six options. You can do uh, the radius, or, or three different options, right? So the radius, uh, smart, or diameter of each. And you do have the ability to go ahead and toggle that in the properties as well. So if I click on this and I come over to properties, you can change that here too. So this just gives you more flexibility if you want it to be diameter or or radius makes it a lot easier to just toggle that. Another one is uh, just uh, splitting and trimming. So if I just go back into that one and let's just use another one of our new tools, the center rectangle. Now, once I have that center rectangle in that circle, we have the split tool in here so we use the split tool in a variety of different ways but here you can come over and I can say split and I can say at all the intersection points of whatever is selected so if I grab all of those you'll notice the red circles it will go ahead and it'll split at all those intersections so if I go ahead and hit OK there we go it went ahead and actually split those entities into separate so if I select that and hit delete so they're not just intersections, they're actual splits. So that is an overview of some of the uh, sketching tools and how to utilize those in the new DX 2022.